Believe it or not, we are just outside of Cherokee, Oklahoma at the Great Salt Plains. And joining us today is Steve Allspaugh, an NRCS soil scientist for our state. And Steve, I mean, let's talk about the soil. You can't deny it here. What are we looking at? Well, Casey, you're looking at probably one of the most unique soils in uh, all of Oklahoma. We have high concentrations of salts here. Um, and it's kind of a, a, a mix of the salt being here, groundwater being close to the surface. We get evaporation from the surface of the soil and the salt concentrates uh, at the surface. And just below the surface, uh, we, we start forming gypsum crystal, crystals, uh, which is a calcium-based salt. And we start seeing those selenite crystals like you're holding there in your hand. So we're in the digging area. A lot of people come out here to dig those crystals. What we're looking at are salt crystals. They are salt crystals. And when most people think about salt, they think about table salt, right. which is a, a sodium-based salt, sodium chloride. Uh, but there are lots of different types of salts. So you have calcium, magnesium, potassium, and then the sodium salts. Here, it's primarily that gypsum, which is a calcium sulfate salt. And it comes out of the bedrocks in western Oklahoma. We have gypsum beds that formed when the geology here formed under a shallow sea. So that salt comes from the west. Um, and then from the north, we have some remnants of the high plains, which you know has the Ogallala aquifer in it. Uh -huh. And it meets here along the Salt Plains River. And the water table is close to the surface. We get that evaporation. And that's how we form these plains. Because the, we the dug maybe a, a foot down or something sure. and saw that water coming up. Right. And so, so is that what then goes to the lake that's just east of us? Yes, absolutely. And um, it's fairly common in the western part of the state to find salt affected areas. It's not common to find them as in an area as large as what we have here, but we have a lot of small areas where the water table gets close enough to the surface that evaporation pulls those salts to the surface and then that crust forms on the surface of the soil. Right. So obviously salt affects your pH, I mean, and we're not seeing any plants growing right, right. around us here. Can you right. talk a little bit about what that does to the soil chemistry? Um, there's quite, there's a couple of different things that go on. One's chemical, one's physical. Um, gypsum salt really is neutral pH wise, so it really doesn't have a big impact on that. But our sodium based salts, when we find those in nature, it elevates our pHs and we see pHs of 9, 9.1 okay. on some of those soils and not very many plants can tolerate that. Um, the other thing going on here is we have such a high concentration of salt, the salt attracts water and it attracts it so firmly that plants can't get that water out of the, out of the away from the salt. Okay. And so they basically die of drought. Oh, that, so even though we're seeing water, it's not necessarily available. Right. Chemically, it's tied up with that salt. The plants are not strong enough to pull it away from the salt mm -hmm. and they can't take up the water and salt crystals together. So, okay. um, so there are very few plants that would, well, obviously where we are right now, there's no plants adapted. Uh, when we get to the edge of the plains, we'll start to pick up some sparse vegetation. There's a few uh, native plants that are adapted to that, mostly inland salt grass and alkali sacaton, which are, are a couple of grasses that we see in various areas of the state. Okay, and I, I want to answer a question that I think maybe some viewers have is, is this salt usable? Um, it's not necessarily table salt, but uh, they are using it for agriculture purposes? They do. They do some solar uh, salt production a little further west from here, um, and they harvest that in the fall usually. They grow the crystals all summer, har harvest them in the fall, and most of that is used for livestock salt, so okay. not human grade uh, for human consumption. All right. All right, well, this is a fun place to bring your family and dig a few crystals and just experience a different part of Oklahoma. We hope you enjoyed this video. It's part of our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. You can also find even more videos on our OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel. And join us on social media for great gardening tips, photos, and discussion.